So I just want to make a few comments about some opportunities that are, I believe are available to us. I've spent the last few days um, beginning an investigation of um, the work of another Turing Award winner. Uh, this is, his name is Judea Pearl. Uh, so Judea Pearl has been working in the area of probabilistic reasoning and AI. And um, his sort of central interest seems to have been the introduction of causation. Um, uh, so in, in particular, uh, he's, uh, been interested in, um, admitting, um, causal reasoning into, um, <clears throat> uh, the domain of inference, which is normally, um, associated with statistics. Um, so, you know, the history of statistics has been one and um and it's really quite diabolical one in which there was you know significant um scientific pressure to not admit uh causal information um which is <clears throat> um rather uh well in the case of the smoking debate as an example uh, it was very sad. Um, uh, there were, you know, uh, there was an unwillingness on the part of the scientific community for decades to admit um, that the statistical data was overwhelmingly uh, uh, <clears throat> showed that uh, there was a causal correlation between smoking and lung cancer. Uh, and that's in large measure because there was so much um, sort of scientific dogma. Uh, I, so, so I, if there's an oxymoron, <laughs> if, there's an, if there's another oxymoron <laughs> uh, or more oxymoronic phrase than scientific dogma, I've never heard it. Um, but, but anyway, there was the, the scientific culture um, was very, very influenced by um, Galton and Fisher, who were moving, um, moving towards notions of statistical correlation as opposed to causation. And you can only get so far uh, with that. And so, um, uh, um, but in the 80s and 90s, people began to look at um, uh, <clears throat> um, causation, uh, in particular, sort of via the back door of um, Bayesian networks. People began to um, include more and more um, causal information. Now, of, of course, there were rogue scientists. Uh, Sewell Wright is a really good example of a scientist who suggested that if you introduced um, causal diagrams or graphs reflecting causal information, um, um, you, could, you could control for correlations um, that uh, m might otherwise not be controlled for. Um, so, <clears throat> um, uh, the um, uh, Judea Pearl's work is largely about that. And he introduces a, a kind of calculus called the do calculus, which allows for reasoning about interventions. So you move from um, a Bayesian perspective, uh, so the uh, um, conditional probability, to an interventionist perspective. So the probability of... Um, X given that you can do Y. In other words, you can intervene to enforce that Y is the case. Uh, and then he has uh, three rules which have been proven to be complete, um, uh, uh, which allow you to uh, essentially rid yourself of the do. So they're, they're reductionist rules that allow you to get, uh, slowly get rid of the do operator. Um, 
So uh, this is uh, quite interesting um, just in its own right, uh, but it's also interesting from a couple of diff different perspectives. So, so one perspective, which is relatively abstract, is that the, the uh, process calculi, and especially the row calculus, um, gives us a way to reason about causation, right? So wherever you have a calm event, you have a clear notion of causation. Right, so you have uh, a message arriving, uh, delivering data, and uh, the continuation has uh, that data as visible in its scope. So you have a clear notion of causation. Um, and uh, you can get to probabilistic notions of causation by providing stochastic views of um, uh, or so stochastic um, mechanisms for comma events, right? So you associate rates to the uh, the channels, and then um, you get a uh, <clears throat> there's an integral that you can perform that will give you a probability distribution over the um, comma events um, in uh, for a given um, uh, process that are available for a given process in a given state. Um, uh, so so that, that kind of uh, gives a, a different view of a notion of causation and, and in particular probabilistic causation. So the two, the two ideas are related. So sort of the do calculus um, is related to um, a stochastic row calculus in this way. They can both be um, seen as in, in ter, you know, um, giving a formalism that accounts for similar phenomena. And on the basis of that, you can, you can do certain kinds of comparisons. Um, but beyond that, um, I'm interested because we have causal data in the, um, the graph itself. Uh, so the transaction graph associated with um, uh, the transaction graph associated with the uh, um, uh, the you know the the transactions in the network, um, which are of course related to comma events, but they're they they involve more than a single comma event, um, provide some causal information, and in fact you can. You can think of the graph that's generated um, by, um, if, if you have a list of transactions, the nodes in the graph are um, the sources and the targets of the trends of the transactions and the arrows are the transactions themselves running from source to target. Um, and now you can, armed with this causal graph, um, uh, or armed arm with this graph and interpreting it as a causal graph, you can start to ask questions about the likelihood of financial events. Uh, so you can, you can ask whether or not, uh, if you treat uh, the, the addresses as if they were random variables, um, you can start to ask questions about um, the influence of one random variable on another, or the probability of uh, a value um, at a given random variable, um, i.e. an address. Um, uh, so the probability of, a particular, of observing a particular balance at a given variable um, given uh, other balances. So you can start to you can start to do forensic um, financial analysis or transactional analysis on the network, um, and so I'm I'm interested in calculi or, or or calculational frameworks that allow us to do um, predictive um, uh, uh, analysis of this type, um, and so th this is very much in in alignment with with. This is very much in alignment with what I've been um, pointing out before with Web 2.0. 
Um, so if we continue to follow Web 2.0, um, part of the consequence of high volume, low risk transactions is that this high volume of transactional data gives you information about trends. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, that's been something that's very powerful about Twitter, right? Any 140 character event is not particularly interesting, but hundreds of millions or billions of 140 character events uh, is very interesting and provides lots and lots of uh, data. Um, so, um, so this is, so with the blockchain, we have more information than the kind of information you find on Twitter. Um, and, and, you know, in, in particular, we have both transactional information, but also if we begin storing data on chain, we also have all the data events. So we have a strictly richer, um, uh, data set their data population um, than we have, say, in the case of Twitter or Facebook or Instagram uh, or th those kinds of things. And so, um, but, but, but as with those kinds of uh, sources, uh, I'm particularly interested in, uh, you know, si since we're talking about you know, potentially monetization kinds of um, uh, uses of the network, uh, so monetized content, sponsored content, sponsored actions, as Rao likes to say. Um, if we can give information uh, to the sponsors and to other interested parties that are predictive in nature, um, uh, and we can back up those predictions with, with uh, mathematics that has been shown to be very, very successful in epidemiological studies um, and uh, other, other kinds of uh, questions, um, then I think, uh, you know, then we've, we've dramatically increased the, the power of the platform. As an example of the kind of thing, uh, you know, our, our behavioral types um, are very good if we have an algebra that's going to account for some domain of computation. But in the case of DeFi, um, you know, if, if we blindly apply the, um, the behavioral typing mechanism to, to the, con the individual contract level, that's not going to account in a direct or easy way um, uh, with uh, 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 for the kinds of macro trends that you might see in a DeFi based marketplace, right? So it, it will tell you whether the interaction of some collection of contracts is safe, but it's not going to tell you what um, financial trends, what macro financial trends might be, or at least not directly. There might, might be some way to do those calculations, but it's, it's not obvious how to do them in a, you know, directly from the types. Um, so you would have to switch domains. You'd have to look for a domain which gives you information uh, at, this, at this trend level and then apply uh, the operational semantics and logical form program to that domain. Uh, um, so so um, Pearl's do calculus um, looks like the kind of thing where you could start to ask questions about trends. You could start to you could start to make uh, predictions about how DeFi markets are likely, where they're likely to go, how they're likely to end up, uh, given the blockchain data and the tr the, the transactional data. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, thing that I I've been thinking a lot about is finding the right set of mathematical tools uh, to go after these kinds of questions, you know, so we can, we can make a, a reasoned argument why this kind of monetization platform is um, more powerful um, than you find with, say, Google or, or YouTube or, or what have you. 
um, and at the same time um, uh, uh, be able to lend uh, some safety or, or you know, uh, yeah, so, 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 some kinds of tools for these crazy markets that are emerging so that they're, they're not they're not so much the wild west and <laughs> and subject to to all kinds of crazy market corrections um anyway so this is this is why i'm what my motivations are um i'm just getting into it you know so i've read uh, i've been uh reading his uh, popular book the book of why which i heartily recommend to anyone here or anyone who's listening um, and then now I've spent some time studying his papers. Um, in particular, I'm very interested in the uh, the three rules of the due calculus and and their uh, you know their sort of reduction uh, capabilities. Um, so essentially, you can you can think of them as as uh, like a, like a model of computation because they're they're starting from a a, a calculus that's rich in the do operator and uh, if with um, successive um, repetitions of the uh, of the rules you can eventually or, or in many cases uh, if, if there's a way to get rid of the do operator these rules will get rid of the do operator so you can think of it as like a normalization process right so in the lambda calculus if you keep uh, applying um, beta beta reduction and alpha equivalence, um, then eventually, if if it's possible to get down to a term that doesn't have an application in it, you will find you will find the form of the term that does not have uh, uh, the uh, an application in it. Um, likewise, with the pi calculus or the rho calculus. Um, there are procedures for certain classes of processes, which um, where, you know, if, if it's possible to get to a, a, a process that doesn't have um, a, a, a par in it, you can, you can get down to a process that doesn't have a par in it. So you're, so you're over and over and over again applying the COM rule and the other, um, and the other rules, the structural equivalence rules and so forth, um, to eliminate par from the term. Um, so, so those are all reduction strategies, and you can think of the rules of the do calculus as kind of like reduction strategies in that sense. Uh, so I'm I'm quite interested in that, and in particular, um, uh, interested in that from the perspectives that I was talking about. Uh, so, uh, any questions about what I said? I do have a question as far as. Um, you know, the home or how this information be presented. So do you envision with the, the ad platform that, you know, there's a dashboard, uh, a user logs in and they can go to the predictive analytics uh, drop down and enter in some information and, and it goes through the algorithm that we create for them to, 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 um, to get the information there, or is this more uh, on the art, our chain side of things? as far as where, where do you see the, the ultimate home for, for this? Type oh, I, I, I don't think that there's one, I don't think there's one home that we could, okay. we could certainly make it, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the extent to which we can, we can usefully employ these techniques mm -hmm. um, uh, to the, the monetization side, then it's very reasonable to have it, uh, you know, have some predictive analytics um, uh, tools available uh, within that platform. Um, but it's also reasonable to have uh, have those tools available directly on our chain uh, for other reasons, and um, uh, you know uh, it's quite it's quite interesting to look at um, crossover between um, stochastic models of um, the you know the row calculus and uh, this do calculus in the, in the sense that you you want to be able to like. For example, if you're using the row calculus to model some biological phenomena, um, uh, then then it, it might be that these these uh, these um, the do calculus gives you a way to make some predictions at a higher level, right? So the interesting the interesting thing about the 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 uh, row calculus and process calculi 
based models of the um, of uh, <clears throat> um, uh, these kinds of chemical, biochemical, and biological systems is that they're they're literally modeling the 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 interactions of of you know classes of individual agents right they're 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 they're, they're you know you, when you write write this down you're you're modeling some set of chemical equations right but that doesn't give you the global view what's going to happen in the beaker if you pour these chemicals together right so right so going from this this local view to a global view well the the thought is that that the do calculus might be might provide a set of tools um, that bridges the gap from the local view to the global view right and so that that has utility and, and that's i mean the reason the way I like to work is I like to look at things that have you know super super high utility like they're very very highly leveraged right so the row calculus is a very tiny calculus incredibly abstract but its abstraction is what gives it this incredible range of 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 applications and, and, and scope of utility. Mm -hmm. um, the do calculus is, is similar in the sense that, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very abstract. It's highly abstract and it gives you this leverage. And so I'm, I'm interested in this highly leveraged uh, perspective, which allows you to uh, uh, have very, very broad scope of application. Um, uh, as as another example, um, it, it turns out that some of these techniques were discovered independently um, by the error correcting code community. Um, so there are these things called turbo codes, which turn out to uh, to be a trick uh, related to. Um, uh, so instead of sending a single um, coded message, you send two coded messages, uh, one in which you've, you've sort of garbled the message, um, but you've still applied the code, and, the, and then another where you, you've sent the, the, the ungarbled message. Uh, and it, and it, tur it turns out that this gives you dramatic compression and very, very good um, error rates, you know, highly advantageous error rates. Uh, in fact, the turbo codes, as far as I know, are the best ones. So this, I, I believe um, that I can turn these ideas um, into ideas about um, additional techniques for liveness uh, in our network, because there's this direct connection between the error correcting codes and our synchrony constraints. So um, we should be able to, to leverage, again, again, there's a lot of research to be done. You know, I'm still, still digesting all this material, but, but I, I have a, a fairly strong suspicion that I can turn this information into improvements in our synchrony constraint mechanisms. Uh, so so that, yeah. that, that, that's what I'm saying about incredibly broad scope of utility. That's, that's, right. where, that's the place where I like to work, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's great. Mathematical laziness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask. Yes. Uh, uh, is, is this can be used uh, for, for consensus or improving consensus? It seems like we can have uh, uh, something more into direction that... Uh, we can we, we cannot probably uh, conceive all the possible uh, attacks on the on the consensus. So if we can create some kind of mechanism that uh, we can have this kind of heuristics to to say uh, we don't we, we can express our desires to to not go into some states, but we cannot express all of the possible uh, like uh, attacks or you know. so can this be used in in this way that uh, we are describing our intention and. Uh, we can write some code that can uh, uh, adapt uh, in, in this situation that we didn't uh, perceive, uh, you know, in, in front. Um, I, it, it, so, so if I, if I understand your question, you're, you're, you're asking, can it be used to, um, uh, to do kind of uh, um, attack models, uh, generalized attack models, or, or 
or partial attack models, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I, I think that that's reasonable. I think that's a, it's a reasonable direction to go and explore. Uh, I mean, in, in general, you know, the thing about attack models is, you know, there are things that you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really hard to, to account for those in, in your model. And then do we, do we really need to account for all of them? Or, or we can just say, uh, now uh, the consensus or, or now uh, produced blocks are going into some direction that we definitely don't want. So maybe the, 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 there is not some specific attack already, but uh, we know that uh, going into some direction is, is like dangerous and uh, we don't want to go there. So yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you, you, you could do, yeah, you could do even predictive, you could do predictive modeling on the, uh, you know, so you could do forecasting on branching and saying, well, that, that branch is, is, is going to be dangerous, so, you know, don't don't put stake behind it. Yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, I have one other question related to uh, rates and uh, uh, a connection to uh, uh, to, to re reductions. So, if in case of uh, weak by simulation, can we also uh, apply this? Because uh, then maybe we are uh, replacing our program with some other program which doesn't have uh, uh, exactly the same uh, reductions. Uh, um, so, I mean, you're not doing semantics preservation if you replace it with, you know, programs that don't have the same reductions. Uh, unl unless, of course, you're talking about weak by simulation. Yes, so, yes. So okay. yeah. In the case of weak by simulation, so there are going to be reductions that are not visible or, or not counted in some way, right? And in that case, yes, it's perfectly reasonable to talk about, um, you know, uh, substituting a one weekly by similar, uh, a program that is weekly. If Q is weekly by similar to P, but Q has some preferred reduction characteristics, such as fewer comma events or, or, um, you know, com events that that um, cost less, for example, uh, then that's a perfectly reasonable uh, 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 thing to do, right? It's, it's, it's the kind of refactoring you'd like to do. Yeah. And and then uh, we have uh, uh, how, how we how we can then uh, have some kind of uh, relation between uh, different rates for a probability. Well, these programs. Uh, well, I, again, the, the, uh, it depends on what you're, what you're asking the rates to model for you. So it's very clear in the case of biological processes, what you're asking the rates to model for you I mean, because you have mm -hmm. empirical data, right? You can, you can say the rate of reaction w between, you know, sodium and, and chlorine, right? That, that, that's something you can measure empirically. Um, so in, in other cases that, you know, at, you know what you're you have to you have to you find some kind of justification for uh for what you're asking the rates to model i see right so i mean in the case of our chain you know um the you, the the rates uh, model certain financial incentives i see i see okay i I have two unrelated questions. The, the first is, uh, have you coined a term for this predictive analytics modeling or we just refer to it as predictive analytics modeling for now? Uh, no, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a particular term. Okay. And you, um, the term or the word uh, stochastic, you use that quite frequently. I looked it up, so it has to do with variables. Is, is that how we think of, uh, you know, the stochastic, stochastic modeling is introducing a variables into the... This? No, no, no. The stochasticity has, has to do with the uh, randomness. Randomness, okay. Right. So, so, so there's a, there's a, there are, uh, you're looking at probability distributions. 
So, for example, with the with the original stochastic pi calculus uh, or presentations of a stochastic pi calculus, what they were what they were doing was to associate with with different channels or classes of channels. Um, so, so you know, let's say you have uh, instead of saying new x, you say new x from a given type or a given sample of channels, and every every channel coming out of that new is going to have a particular rate associated with it. Um, and then, so then when you, so let's say you have X1 and X2 uh, and you have a race condition. Um, so a comm event on X1 and a comm event on X2. So that's four total processes, right? Uh, or potentially if you have a summation. So, so yeah, so, so the, the, the smallest one where, where you're gonna see some, uh, some significant events are Let's say we have a four comprehension uh, weighting on X1 in summation with a four comprehension weighting on X2, right? So it'll do one or the other. And then you have outputs on X1 and outputs on X2. And now you wanna understand, you know, what's the likelihood that X1 um, uh, wins versus the likelihood that X2 wins the race, okay. right? And so you can, you can calculate from the rates on the channels X1 and X2, you can calculate a probability distribution, which allows you to, to give a weighted average. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sure. Um, hey, Greg, got, I pasted some um, stochastic I that. code yeah. from Microsoft Research. Can you relate to that? I mean, is that what you're talking about at some point? Yes, that's, that's exactly, that's, that, that, that's from, um, uh, uh, oh God, Philip. Um, yeah, Andrews. that's from Philip Andrews's work. Yeah. So so yeah. So he 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 um, provides a syntax uh, um, for a stochastic pi machine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so and he he tried to make the syntax a little easier for biologists to read. Oh, okay. Uh, um, but it, you know, but there's a there's a way to turn this directly into. Um, uh, Pi calculus friendly syntax or uh, row calculus friendly syntax. Cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's exactly right. That's that's a spim. Uh, what is exactly the meaning of uh, this uh, do operator? Um, so the the intuitive meaning uh, is that you're, 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 t you're making an intervention. So, so start with the, the, the conditional probability, the probability of X given Y. Um, right. And so, so you, you, you have some, you have some, uh, evidence, um, that may condition the probability of X, right. But that evidence may range over multiple different instances. Right. So, uh, so it could be that, you know, Y could take on the value of one, it could take on the value of zero. Um, so given that Y is one, what's the probability of X? Or given that Y is zero, what is the probability of X, right? So, so that's sort of in traditional Bayesian framework. But, but interventionist um, stuff, like, no, it's not, it's not the case that, you know, I, I'm not ranging over these probabilities. I'm I'm intervening and I am setting it to be um, a one, right? So the probability of X given do Y equal one. That's what the, that's the, so the, the, op, the, op, the operator is interpreted as, you know, a kind of causal intervention, some outside force, some, some force outside of the, system is is you know selecting and make ensuring that that is the only value that is possible uh, mathematically what this corresponds to is in the the causal graph um deleting or inserting certain arrows in the causal graph mm, i see is there any notion of a scope or a, a I'm imagining some kind of state where we are. Uh, we have Lord some have mercy! I, I wish that they had a notion of scope. That is, that that's one of the 
that is one of my um, hidden motivations for operational semantics and logical form. I am so, so frustrated by um, both the syntax and the uh, meaning of Bayes' uh, uh, conditional probability. What, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm hoping for with operational semantics and logical form is an account of conditional probability that, um, that where you, you see the X given Y as an implication, right? That's what it should be. It should be, it should be some kind of arrow Right. It should, uh, and, and, and so, so if we can, if we, if we have a notion of collection, that is a distribution, right. So, so it's a generalization of multisets, right. So you could think of a multiset as, you know, a, a, a set together with a map for the number of occurrences. So it's very easy to go from there to a set together with a distribution. Right. Uh, so, so, so if we have a notion of a collection, um, uh, a, a, a collection, um, the collection part of the logic is a distribution, then you can now talk about your normal notion of implication, right? But it's an implication that comes from this distribution. Um, and so we should be able to give, a, you know, some kind of account of conditional probability that way. And if not, I'd like to know where it goes wrong. Um, but the, I mean, the, <laughs> the, the issue is that the uh, conditional probability is still very, very fuzzy, it, uh, uh, pun intended. Um, uh, so, so, so yeah, I would love for there to be a notion of scope, right? I mean, in, in the case of ordinary implication, we know exactly how implication is related to scope, at least with respect to intuitionistic logic, right? An arrow from A to B, right? A implies B is exactly correlated to a lambda term that takes in X's of type A uh, and produces, you know, uh, values of type B, right? So the notion of scope is crystal clear. Um, in the case of conditional probability, the notion of scope is not clear at all. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons I uh, would love to to give um, a, uh, a, uh, a a clear um, account of conditional probabilities. I mean, the other the another approach uh, that is also you know I you know you know art is long, life is short, right? But I mean, uh, you, you can. You can think about quantum mechanics as really a theory of probability that allows for negative probabilities. So you you divorce it, you take the math of quantum mechanics and you divorce it from any physical interpretation, except for the Born rule, which is all about which is giving you an interpretation about the likelihood of certain events, right? And and so at that at that point you're you, Quantum mechanics now is a theory of probability, and that theory of probability is neither frequentist nor Bayesian, and that's provable. Um, so, so uh, you can think of that as a third notion of probability theory, and so maybe that's a different way to, to get at um, an account of conditional probabilities. But I haven't I haven't had a. I just don't have enough time to <laughs> pursue all of the. <laughs> all of the different, you know, threads that have to be nailed down. You know? <laughs> uh, but, 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 you know, that, that view of quantum mechanics is, 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 um, I mean, I came to it independently um, uh, in 2006. I, I, you know, I sort of, it, I was looking at it from that perspective and it was very obvious to me that it was a third account of probability. Um, but Scott Aronson and many other researchers have also share that uh, that uh, point of view, and uh, you know, and they're they're highly respected. So this is not just you know some random random guy you know making claims. Uh, there's there's a there's a fairly significant um, uh, a, a fairly significant um, <clears throat> community of 
folks who take this point of view. So that, that might be another way to go after a notion of scope as related to conditional probabilities. Right, so that would then re relate, mm -hmm. that would then relate um, it to a, some kind of linear or classical linear, intuitionistic linear or uh, like a linear lambda calculus with a probabilistic linear lambda calculus might, might give you a notion of scope. Um, if, if quantum mechanics were your, uh, were your notion of probability. And by the way, there's only one other uh, set uh, a consistent um, interpretation like that. So you, you can get it with the complexes and you can get it with the octonians and that's it. Uh, so, so there might be another notion of probability that arises uh, from the octonians. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, from the quaternions and the octonians. So there's two more. So the, the quaternions and the octonians. So you might get a notion of probability out of the quaternions and another notion of probability out of the octonians. Um, so, that's a, so that's another direction that, uh, to, to, to look at. But uh, again, that's, that's getting so far from, so far removed from uh, the kinds of applications we normally consider like predictive analytics and those sorts of things that, you know, it's for retirement time <laughs> or, or recreation. <laughs> Thanks for the answer. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for the long, long winded answer. Oh, no, no, no. Thanks. Uh, all right, folks. That's uh, that's all I've got for today. Um, I do. Re I heartily recommend uh, Judea Pearl's uh, uh, work. Um, it's uh, it's, it's very lucid. Um, it's been well vetted. He got a Turing award for it. Um, so it's, you know, this is not fly by night kind of stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's really quite, quite powerful. Um, and, uh, and, uh, relatively, I mean, it's as easy as the row calculus to, to grasp. It's not, you know, it's like, it's the kind of thing that you could, that a bright high school student can understand. Uh, which is the kind of mathematics I like, you know, because that's about about my level. So, um, anyway, thanks so much uh, uh, for uh, your time this morning, and uh, I'll see some of you in Dev stand up in a few minutes. Thanks, Greg. Great, thank you. See you. Bye bye.